What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is the locker room. Week nine of season seven of the GBA, the San Francisco Giantes are going up against the San Jose Sharpedos in their second match this season in the division slash conference rivalry, the Battle of the Bay. Uh, last time we battled against Tom and his San Jose Sharpedos, we lost pretty handedly. And uh, not gonna lie, at that time, I didn't feel confident about our matchup. I felt like he had too many tricks for me, and then he prepped really well on top of that. Now, a lot of the time, you can come back from uh, a, a poor matchup by just making some good sets. And uh, he, he got me that time, he got me good, and I'm gonna be looking for revenge this time. And I'm, I've got a lot of new members on my roster that I think are gonna really mess with his team prep. Uh, so, of course, you guys might remember last time I battled him, I still had Ferrothorn, I still had Gyarados, I still had uh, Aerodactyl, and none of that really helped with a lot of the threats that he ended up bringing that were pretty good against the majority of my team, and I've since replaced them with Amoongus and Ditto and Rhyperior, and all three of those are mon that he could be looking at and going, that matches up really well against my team. Ditto, for example, can be a great thunderous T-check, just all on his own. Uh, it can be a great revenge killer against Zydog. It can be a decent enough switch in against Starmanitan uh, in some circumstances. It can be a rapid spinner for me for Hitmonlee. It can revenge Hitmonlee. Uh, decent switch into Azul. <laughs> there's, there's so much it does. And yet I didn't bring it this week, and um, that's because I'm, I'm going for a little bit of a different play, and so we're going to kind of go over my team now, and I'll talk to you through a little bit uh, what I was expecting. His team has also undergone some changes, uh, only really one of those I would consider significant, and I'll go over that also. So uh, here's the team I'm bringing this week. It's Knight's Watch, the Umbreon, Zong, the Bronzong, Moana, the Tapu Fini, Dumbledore, the Conkelder, Trip, the Amoongus, and Fresh the Arcanine. So, uh, above me you can see his 11. They are very similar to last time, but with two notable changes. So they are, and this is somewhat organized in a way that I think that they're likely to come, but uh, not entirely, and the reason I, I really need to emphasize that this time is that I honestly think 10 of his 11 mons, I wouldn't even put past the, the phrasing likely brings. He has like 10 likely brings against me, but I had to kind of do my best, and so I sort of tiered them. Uh, I don't think the top six are the exact team he brings, and I'll kind of go into that in a little bit as to why. But he has the Thunderous T, the Porygon 2, the Zydog, Zygarde 10%, Darmanitan, Celesteela, Nidoqueen, Vaporeon, Hitmonlee, Azelf, Gardevoir, and Shiftry. Now, last time we battled, Thunderous T annihilated my entire team, you know, I was already weak to electric types, I was, I didn't have super great options against setup, uh, because a majority of my means of getting rid of setup, uh, involved, <laughs> thank you Mr. Phone, uh, involved taking him on with Pokemon who uh, couldn't recover off the damage, so I was weak to setup, and he has nasty plot access, I was weak to fast electric mons and he is that and he's a powerful electric mon I was not in a good place against it and so I prepared as much as I could against it and then he just didn't care and just came on in and volt switched on me and did ev everything he wanted and uh, it was <laughs> guys it was it was bad it was a bad situation it was a bad battle for me and uh, I completely overlooked uh, a couple of mons that turned out to be his biggest threats to me, and that was Zydog and Hitmonlee. Now, looking at what I have now, and what he has now, I think Hitmonlee is a less likely bring, however, it is still a very good Pokemon against my team, uh, for quite a lot of reasons, but it doesn't quite make what I consider the highest tiers, and that's because Thunderous T is still great against my team, uh, I haven't super improved my chances against it outside of the fact that I now have an immunity, I have an extra resist, and that makes me no longer weak per se to electric type mons. But yeah, there's so much power on that on that Pokemon that it can still be quite troubling. I'm literally trading for my team on my DS while I'm talking to you guys here. So don't 
don't mind me if I keep looking down here. That's what I'm doing. It's still a devastating Pokemon. Uh, it could very easily run HP Water, HP Grass, uh, HP Ice to take on uh, the Rhyperior, to take on the Amoongus, whatever it feels it needs uh, to combat the Pokemon that I have that resist it. So it could still do that. Uh, it also nets him a good amount of momentum and it outspeeds quite a few of the threats on my team and the ones that doesn't outspeed can't really come in on it very safely, things like Gengar. Uh, the Porygon 2 is just a staple bring for him. Uh, he is hard pressed to ever not bring it, I think, because it's it, it walls everything that's not uh, gonna knock it off, um, threaten it with hazards, or... Uh, fighting type moves, you know what I mean? So, Kinkelda does very well against it. A lot of my other Mon struggle a little bit more. Um, we have Zydog. The ground, Thousand Arrows Dragon coverage is really strong. It's, uh, it's very difficult for my team in particular to switch in on because I don't have any bugs and the only grass type Mon I have is also part poison and so for that reason I can't really do much uh, against the Thousand Arrow spam. So rather than try and find a way around it, typing wise, I sought to just combat that with the statistics and the raw bulk that I think I would need in order to take it on. So that's sort of gone into my planning. Darmanitan, fire types are devastating if you're unprepared for them and subpar if you do i have an arcanine this week and i have a very defensive umbreon i have a moana uh, between those three things it discourages the bring uh, it also is weak to stealth rocks and his removal options are not the greatest removal options around but they exist he's got the celesteela celesteela is fat and annoying and can run setup offense it can run stally defense uh, i brought a couple of mon to handle that the nitto queen is his best stealth rock setter yeah if i'm you know being subjective i think it's his best one uh, so there's always a chance for that modest sheer force life orb is uh, very powerful i think he can have that also as an option uh, then we've got Vaporeon, which is a decent wall to several of the Mon. It also keeps a lot of his Mon healthy, removing Toxics, passing Wishes, things like that. Hitmonlee, a lot of uh, a lot of power options behind it. Running Reckless and Choice Band is a, is a thing he could do. He could run more defensive like he did last time with Assault Vest. Uh, he's lost a lot of that surprise factor now that I've seen that set. Uh, he has Azelf. I think this is a Z-Mon user. I can't fully recall... <laughs> Um, but that thing's got great coverage, uh, very good speed tier, very good power. Uh, then we've got Gardevoir, which fills a similar role as Azelf. He brought it last time as a defensive set, and my team wasn't great against it, but it still didn't do much. Uh, and I'm, I'm not too worried about it this time, but it is still definitely an option for him. And then Shiftry, which is Defogger, not that fast, not that powerful, and I have great answers to it. So. Sorry guys, as I said, I am uh, in the middle of trying to get my team traded so I can get this battle with uh, Tom underway. So let's, now that we've gone through his 11, let's go through the 6 that I've brought to try and combat them. Uh, Night's Watch the Umbreon running a very standard set. You've seen it on the screen for half this video already. Uh, Foul Play, Wish Protect, Heal Bell. I'm not always going to be behind the Misty Terrain. Uh, he has a P2 which can accidentally spread tons of status even if it's not his goal. Uh, he can run some fairly annoying sets. Uh, there we go. Trade activated. He can run some fairly annoying sets on some of his other things. Will-O-Wisp on the Gardevoir. Um, he's got T-Wave options. I don't want to let him capitalize against uh, my lack of Tapu Fini um, at present and really pull massive advantage because I wasn't paying attention if that makes sense if he puts me in a precarious situation where i can't stay in or i can't bring in finny and i don't have the misty terrain up i want to be able to remove those threats with heal bell and one of the ways 
I can do that is by having Heal Bell on Night's Watch. I consider a few other things, maybe a baton pass there. It could be useful, but Night's Watch is super important in this battle, and here's why. He is my primary Zydog answer. Zydog, even with Choice Band, is uh, not 3-hit KO, or he has the potential to 3-hit KO me, but after dancing with Protect, wishing I can stay healthy, Night's Watch needs to stay healthy. He is a very important check to Zydog, um, as I don't really have great alternative options to do that. Um, I have Tapu Fini, which can take the um, Dragon Stab, but it cannot handle his uh, Thousand Arrows, so that wouldn't be great. Uh, I have Bronzong, again, same situation. Amoongus is okay-ish at taking him on, but all of these kind of bear with them some serious uh, some serious switch-in issues. Night's Watch can take one, he can foul play back hard against him, potentially netting an Oko. Foul play does very well against his team. A lot of his Mon, even especially defensive Mon, are either not too poor in the attack department, or they are weak to uh, foul play. Obviously there's exceptions, not everything fits that uh, fits in that regard, but I'm not trying to make Night's Watch beat his entire team. I need it to handle a few threats, and it does that very well. Synchronize, uh, again, to play with. That is, is my only option there. I don't really care about flinching. He's got like one fake out user. That's pretty much it. Uh, moving on, we've got Bronzong. Bronzong is running Power Weight, uh, Macho Brace, same, same situation to... Uh, for those, I saw a lot of comments about this. I'll explain this one. Power weight halves my speed. Bronzong is already very slow, but with power weight, zero speed investment, and a negative speed nature, Gyro Ball hits uh, a lot harder against some medium speed threats. Things like Hitmonlee, which is not O code unless I have the power weight for the additional speed drop uh, if it's running potentially defensive sets. So uh, it's. It's important that I have that additional power without investing too heavily in it. I need my defense investments. This makes me an okay switch in against several big things. Uh, I'm okay against the Zydog if it gets locked into the wrong move, of course. I'm okay against Hitmonlee, um, barring some very unique sets. Uh, I'm okay again. <laughs> He's okay. He can take hits. He can get up Stealth Rocks. That's what I need him for. I need Stealth Rocks. Stealth Rocks are very good against his team, and his removal options are not the best. Um, so I want to encourage him to put himself in a situation where he's leaning too heavily on his weaker mons so I can start punching holes. Uh, so that's kind of Bronzong's place. Gyro Ball does decent against a, a decent number of the members of his team it'll hit very hard thanks to the stab and the incredibly low speed i have earthquakes decent coverage uh for the darmanitan who resists it. it's also super effective against the nitto queen so that's why we have that trick room is sort of fourth move i didn't really i mean i could it could have been toxic uh just a, an additional layer of something against someone but i like the option to trick room just kind of as a you never know a last minute additional win condition of Dumbledore is still around. It, it pairs very well with him. It's a fourth move, even though it's in the third move slot. Uh, I think it has the potential to put a little bit of a little bit of the uh, momentum back in my favor uh, if it looks like I'm going to be able to get it off. So that's the, that's the purpose of that. Uh, we've got Moana coming back. Moana is running a, a high HP, high speed set. I want it to be bulky, I want it to feel bulky, I want it to give him the impression it's bulky. He can hit it and then think it's defensive on the other side, uh, citing that, oh, that is high HP investment, and yet it didn't have any of the defense investment there, so uh, a little bit of defense investment just to help me take on, again, Zydog or Hitmonlee or something like that. Uh, but the speed investment allows me to outspeed the Hitmonlee, it allows me to outspeed the Vaporeon, it allows me to outspeed any variety of uh, Nitto Queen except Scarfed, uh, outspeeds the Shiftry, uh, outspeeds the Porygon. It's a big speed tier, and I wanted to make sure that I hit it well, and so I did. Uh, 20, uh, 220 
with the plus speed nature allows me to do that i'm running surf moonblast taunt and defog it's a very central set it's it needs to be dependable for me i need to i need to think of moana as a big mid-game support player and not a check because it's not it's not or not a counter it is a check it's not a counter to a lot of these mon um, but I think the speed's going to help a lot because a lot of these Mon, if they're really set in their ways and being particularly powerful, they're uh, they're going to be looking to two-hit KO me anyway. And so I don't have necessarily all the investment I need, but I have the ability to hit back hard on the uh, some of these threats. Uh, Moonblast is big against uh, two threats in particular. Uh, the Zydog and the Hitmonlee, so that'll help a lot. It's also very good against the his his defogger in the Shift Tree and outspeeding the Shift Tree and being able to hit it with a Moonblast uh, before he is able to get an attack off is also pretty cool for me. Uh, Dumbledore is a relatively standard set, pretty similar to what I brought last time. Drain Punch, Mock Punch, Thunder Punch, Ice Punch, Assault Vest with Iron Fist. Um, watching Tom's battle last time, he seemed confused about the set, like he thought I, he couldn't fathom that I would be running Iron Fist over Sheer Force or Guts. Um, I don't need Guts. I don't want to rely on getting status against when I have a Tapu Fini on my team and people don't necessarily uh, prepare a whole lot of status for me. Uh, I have Night's Watch to heal Bell so it doesn't matter if I accidentally get status and don't have Guts. Uh, and I brought Iron Fist because Sheer Force only benefits uh, two of those moves. Iron Fist benefits uh, all of them. So that's going to be... It's a st Again, it's a stability decision for me. Uh, I would rather have the power available to me on all of my moves, even though it is slightly less. Uh, it, does, it does help me out, I think, in the long run there. So my HP set is to take... I want to be able to... <laughs> it's a unique... You know what? I just want to play with random numbers and... Uh, you know, I know, I know other people that do this, and uh, it seems to work out well for them. And so I'm taking, a, I'm taking a note from Envy here, and I'm, I'm doing a Lord spread. Uh, so thank you, Envy, for, for the Lord spreads knowledge. Uh, I'm running a little bit of HP. I'm running a little bit of special defense to help up that assault vest a little bit. Uh, I'm running max attack, and then some uh, hop points into defense and speed just to kind of throw him off a little bit uh we have trip coming he's giga drain clear smog foul play spore as i said before foul play is pretty good against his team clear smog is a great option for me to remove uh boosts uh, because ditto isn't coming this week and ditto is a great way for me to discourage people to boost uh but i don't have him so i want to make sure that i can get rid of that that's what clear smog is for uh, poison, while it would have been great to have a powerful poison stab for the shift tree, uh, shift tree doesn't really beat me, uh, and why, I mean, I'll have to run some more specific calcs, but if he brings him, I will do that, but I don't think he will, um, and it would have been nice against the guard of war, however, I'm not really, I'm disinclined to stay in against the guard of war because it, of the potential that it packs psychic or psy shock. Um, and that's pretty much it. I didn't really need the poison stab for anything else. It, it's nice, but it, it wasn't necessary. Foul play will do the job against all of his physical threats better than anything I could do or anything else. Giga Drain's a nice safe uh, click against the Vaporeon. And uh, it's neutral against the, the Nidoqueen Queen as well. So I like that. Uh, and I like Spore. I was feeling Spore this week. Was considering Toxic. I uh, hope I don't come to regret it, but uh, Spore is a pretty nice way to just remove a threat pretty early if he does end up bringing the shift tree uh then that was a that was a mistake on my part to bring neither the toxic nor the sludge wave but or sludge bomb but we'll see uh, I'm, I'm happy with this set for what it is it's a mixed defensive a little bit more on the special side gives me an additional answer to the thunderous uh fun fact his spot among us spot was it was going to be ditto until this was the last change i made was to to flip ditto out and flip Amoongus in. I'm gonna feel naked without Ditto, just like I did the beginning of the season, uh, but his his presence is still there. Uh, Fresh is coming. He's also gonna be an offensive set this week, but he's running Muscle Band. This is one I haven't really run that much lately. Uh, he's also running Flash Fire. This allows me to be a really decent switch into a banded Darmanitan if it wants to lock itself into the Flare Blitz. If it's not banded, 
Then Night's Watch eats up its attack for days. Uh, Flare Blitz getting powered by that Flash Fire boost. Uh, even the Darmanitan doesn't want to take those hits, even though he resists them. Wild Charge there. I wanted to be able to switch moves, but I didn't want to have to run the Expert Belt. So I was willing to drop a 10% in power to take the Muscle Bend. For those of you who don't know, Muscle Bend is 10% uh, increased damage on all physical moves. Uh, all I have are physical moves. So, uh happy with that uh with those boost options and not having to worry about having no power boost if i'm not hitting super effective which i'm not necessarily uh some of these but i am running uh a speed tier it, i know i am speed tied with darmanitan but i'm i'm not gonna o code darmanitan and darmanitan does have access to earthquake so if i'm not coming in on what i perceive to be a choice locked fire move there's not really much reason for me to have to beat it in a speed tie, and I wanted the extra power. So I'm running this to make sure that I outspeed the Nitto Queen. And uh, that's pretty much it, guys. That's my team. Let me know in the comment section down below what you would have brought. I'm about to get into this with Tom because it's getting kind of late, and honestly, uh, I'm ready to battle. So uh, as always, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.